More than 30 million Army soldiers have served and sacrificed in the U.S. Army. But can you believe the Army does not have its own museum? That is about to change. Our own Pete Hexa got a sneak peek. Where is this That's museum? That's true. It's at Fort Belvoir in Virginia, just outside of D.C. And I got a chance to visit the site where it's being built, right there, and see some of the amazing items that will be inside. You know, to not have a national museum for the Army is shocking. There's a lot of regional museums, sure. but not one consolidated place. They're doing it now. We got a sneak peek. Take a look. The Ark is somewhere very safe. You've seen it in the movies. But did you know there really is a government warehouse like this? Located at Fort Belvoir under tight security, it's filled with artifacts that tell the story of the Army's history. Dr. Jennings, how are you? Nice to see you again. The last time I met this guy, he was Sergeant First Class Jennings, and we served together in the Massachusetts Army National Guard. That's right. Dr. Patrick Jennings is a historian, the perfect person to give a sneak peek at some of the artifacts that will move to the National Museum of the U.S. Army after it's completed. All right, so this is the oldest flag that will be on display at the Army Museum, correct? That is correct. This is the flag of the, the 1st Regiment of U.S. Infantry. This is a militia drum uh, from Massachusetts. It's decorated with a symbol, uh, Latin, dulci et decorum est pro patria mora, uh, which means it is fitting and proper to die for one's country. From the Revolutionary War to World War II, what do we got here? We have probably the most uh, significant cap in Army history, the hat of Douglas MacArthur. This is the half that was made famous uh, in the iconic photo of him wading ashore back in the Philippines. Can I put it on? Oh no, I'm afraid you can't. I can't, I can't put it on. Can't put, can't put it on. I'm gonna get, how about this, I'm gonna get really close. Like this, almost Douglas MacArthur. Nope, can't touch, can't do it. I know, sorry. I've never seen anything like this, what is it? This is a, a homemade weapon, if you will. This was made by a German soldier in World War I, so we're coming up on 100 years of age. This is something a, a German would have carried with them on a trench raid. From the weapons used by our enemies in hand-to-hand -hand combat to the weapons used by our enemies today. This is a haunted motorcycle. It was used by the Taliban to move IEDs from the bomb maker to the bomb planter. This is a uh, piece of the landing gear from one of the aircraft that crashed into the World Trade Center wow. in 9-11, 2001. This looks like what used to be an engine. Where from? This came out of uh, Mogadishu in Somalia. This is the engine from Super 6-1. 6-1 going down. 6-1 going down. 6-1 is going down. A helicopter that was shot down uh, from the famous uh, Black Hawk Down incident. One of the things the Army Museum is striving to do is tell its history through the stories of individual soldiers. This is the Bible of uh, Mr. Melvin Nesterby. He carried this Bible with him through the uh, Bataan Death March, which he survived, and into a Japanese prisoner of war camp. It tells the story of a man who, who had the, the will and the faith to survive. When a visitor walks into the museum, they'll start encountering these large stainless steel pylons. We've put soldiers, individual soldiers, and a brief history about them. Also throughout the museum, life-sized and extremely lifelike soldiers. A lot of these cast figures are active duty soldiers or former soldiers. Currently. Currently in the Army. The idea is to take the visitor to the museum and put them inside the action, inside the vehicle, inside the firefight. Absolutely. What better way to help put visitors on the battlefield than with battle-worn vehicles? The Army Museum is literally being built around four of these, already in place at the construction site. So I can't say I've ever been underneath a World War I tank. <laughs> this is the FT-17, Five of Hearts. We actually found bullet holes, we found a bullet embedded, and we've kept that battle damage to show the visitor. What's it been like to watch a project that's been many years in the making <laughs> sort of rise from the, from the ground? Uh, really an honor, a tremendous honor. For those families and others who have contributed to our nation's service and, and uh, sacrifice, this is special. As you can see, the museum is not yet finished, but the projected opening of the museum is late 2019. They've raised a ton of private money to make it happen. They're still a bit short to donate. Visit armyhistory.org. It's going to happen either way. Some very generous individuals making sure that it happens. Very cool. It'd be a great place to bring soldiers, but sure. then kids, teach them about the Army. So, so, Pete, they would take a $20 bill, right? They would take anything, Anything. Right? Anything. Okay. Yep. So it's great that it will finally be a repository to all that cool stuff they've been And like I didn't, I wanted to put MacArthur's you hat can't. on. No, I just on. couldn't do it. They, yeah. they, no, I had like 10 eyes on it. What if you wore gel 
and it what? would have come out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right.